So the theme my colleagues have been developing over the past few talks is really about the importance of having a framework. Because as, as pension fund trustees or advisors to pension funds or CIOs within pension funds or non-pension fund clients, you're bombarded by investment opportunities. And having a clear framework lets you sift through that, see the wood for the trees, and ask, does this really help me achieve my goals? And never is this true than when you see new opportunities come up and you really don't know how to approach those. And so I'm going to invite next up Greg Fedorenko from the Manager Research Team to talk to you about two new opportunities within that same quadrant, the illiquid credit space. Greg. Thanks, Mitesh. Hello. I'm going to talk about two asset classes uh, in illiquid credit. We've heard a lot about illiquid credit already uh, that we think are becoming available and indeed more interesting to institutional investors, hence ones to watch. Uh, these are leasing finance and lifetime mortgages. So without further ado, leasing finance, what is it? Leasing finance involves banks transitioning portfolios of assets uh, which are leased to underlying corporates to institutional investors. And these can cover a very broad range of sectors. So we see portfolios of aircraft, portfolios of agricultural machinery, portfolios of trucks, medical equipment, computers, etc., etc. Now, a broad range of sectors, but they do tend to have uh, two unifying characteristics, the first of which these are typically mission-critical assets for the underlying borrower. An airline can't really operate without access to planes, you might think. And secondly, normally in these sorts of structures, the institutional investor actually owns the asset itself. You know, it's your plane, it's your combine harvester or whatever, uh, which manifests itself typically in higher recovery values relative to people with secured or unsecured claims on the borrowers. Why is this becoming available, or why is it becoming newly interesting? Again, as has been discussed previously, it's very much a story about regulation and around bank divestment. So uh, leasing portfolios are initially being uh, earmarked as non-core assets by banks and hence divested, or are being required, or banks are being required to hold more capital against them, which of course makes them less economic. Uh, it's, in one instance, you've actually seen a manager taking not only a portfolio of leases, but also the entire leasing business uh, on from uh, people who are getting rid of it, including employees. So not only the portfolio, but also a platform that's able to originate new deals and a kind of a private equity play, which is quite interesting. Um, however, so this is all good so far. Why is it a want to watch and not get on the phone right now and buy as much as you can? Really, we see a bit of a disjunct between the nature of the assets and their capacity to generate long-term uh, secure cash flows and the investment structures available, many of which uh, tend to involve high levels of leverage to target high levels of return and target uh, rather high fees as well. So if you are interested in this asset class, make sure that the structure you are trying to uh, access, use to access them is fully appropriate. Secondly, i uh, just like to spend a few moments on lifetime mortgages. Now, what are lifetime mortgages? They are a subset of the equity release market, which sees people borrow a lump sum or uh, an amount which is going to be drawn down over time against the value of their house uh, on a low LTV, which rolls up over the remainder uh, over, over the life of the mortgage and is typically repaid by the borrower on uh, death, or sorry, uh, we paid by the borrower's estate on death, or by the borrower on transition into, into long-term care. Uh, why, again, is this interesting? Again, it's a regulatory story, although here it's fair to say that this is more an insurance regulation market, particularly as several of the key players have been insurance companies in this market and are now working out what on earth they're going to do with their equity release portfolio, uh, thanks to Solvency 2 and all of that good stuff. So... In terms of opportunities and challenges and structure, the important thing to note here, uh, and again, this, is, this also relates to leasing finance, the institutional investor on the right, the funder, has an originator in between him or herself and the underlying uh, credit or borrower, so grandma in this case, or the underlying corporate in the case of leasing finance, which means that Due diligence on the origination standards of that third party is absolutely critical to make sure that the, uh, the portfolio is being originated according to good standards and that the quality of the assets underlying everything is kept consistent. 
So two quite different asset classes, although similar in certain respects. What I'd like to conclude with, really, as my colleagues have said before me, is that approaching these sorts of opportunities via a clear framework allows you to really bring out the underlying characteristics of each one, where they differ quite substantially in terms of their term and their key underlying risk exposures, but also where they are similar in terms of their liquidity, in terms of the level of security underpinning them, uh, which is quite high in both cases, and critically in terms of the level of complexity involved in their implementation, which involves uh, or should involve a good deal of care and attention on the part of institutional investors. Thanks very much.